Hey kids, guess what? In the 1980s, baseball cards were all the rage. And why wouldn't they be? Baseball cards had everything. Hats, bats, mullets, and grown men that look like they're holding in farts. What more could a kid possibly want? Imagine it's 1989 and you are a small child. You just got your allowance and you walk over to a candy store, you spend 25 cents to get yourself a pack of baseball cards. You take that pack of baseball cards, you open it up and you give it a little smell, and as you're chewing on that wasp egg infested stale piece of gum, you're going through those cards and you notice something. Something catches your eye. On Billy Ripkin's card, you notice that at the bottom of his bat, there are a few words written. You get in real close, and what do you see? That's right, there is a baseball card that was mass produced with an expletive on it. And today, I'm going to tell you the story about how that happened. Major League Baseball players gather to have their pictures taken for various baseball card companies. But when Baltimore Oriole Billy Ripken posed for his picture, there were two words written on the knob of his bat in black magic marker, and one of those words was X-rated. I know what it looks like to me, but I wouldn't say it on television. <laughs> Something about his face. Now, believe it or not, I am not a sport person. I cannot catch. I cannot throw, I cannot uh, get out of the way of any ball, or for that matter, any other sport equipment, no pucks, or I don't even know what else, that little thing that you, you hit when you're playing badminton. I can't get out of the way of that thing either. So bear with me if I, uh, if I misspeak here about baseball. I mean, I, I don't know. I know it's like this thing with a ball and you gotta like, get a touchdown or something. Whatever, it doesn't matter. What matters here is how this ended up on this card. This card was produced in 1989 by the Fleer Corporation. And my guess is that that year, their quality control staff was on strike or something, or on vacation, because there were over 80 different cards with errors on them. A lot of those errors were just small things like statistics being wrong on the back of the card, However, there are two major ones. One of them is this Randy Johnson card that has a cigarette ad in the background for kids. And of course, this one right here, the Billy Ripken F-Face card. And yes, I'm going to say F-Face instead of F-Face because I would like at least a chance of getting this video monetized this time. Thousands of these cards were produced before Fleer realized that there was a problem and then in a mad dash tried to correct the mistakes as fast as they could. So you see a lot of different variations of this card uh, with different types of censorship on it. The final and most common version of this has a little black square on it. So how did this message end up on the end of Billy Ripken's bat? When it first happened, Ripken told a reporter for the Baltimore Sun, I know I'm kind of a jerk at times, I know I'm a little off, but this is just going too far. It appears I was targeted by teammates, but how can this happen? I can see them getting me, I can see being had, but I don't see how it got through them unless they wanted it to. That seems like a pretty good explanation. You know, he wasn't aware that it was there, and some of his teammates were kind of messing with him and wrote it at the bottom. In 2008, however, Ripken was interviewed by CNBC, and he changed his story. I wanted to write something that I could find immediately if I looked up and it was 4.44 and I had to get out there on the field a minute later and not be late. There were five big grocery carts full of bats in there, and if I wrote my number three, 
it could be too confusing. So I wrote F face on it. We were in Fenway Park and I had just taken my first round of BP. I don't know what that means. I threw my bat to the third base side and strolled around the bases. When I was coming back right before I got up to hit again, I remember a guy tapping me on the shoulder asking if he could take my picture. Never once did I think about it. I posed for the shot and he took it. I tried to deflect it as much as I could. It was fairly easy to say that somebody got me with a joke because people think you're the scum of the earth for doing something like this. He wrote F face on the end of his bat so he could distinguish it from other bats. I guess that makes sense that you would want to do something like that, but why in the hell would you want to write face on it because it would just make people think that you are the face, not the bat. You're like insulting yourself. It was a heavy R161 bat. Yeah. And I wrote it on there. I don't know why I chose that phrase. You, you put F face, face on it. Yeah. And it was designated as my batting practice bat. So I could find it easy. It stuck out like a sore thumb and I could make my group on time. Ripken also gave another possibility. It was all a conspiracy. I can't believe the people at FLIR couldn't catch that. I mean, they certainly have to have enough proofreaders to see it. I think not only did they see it, they enhanced it. That writing on that bat is way too clear. I don't write that neat. I think they knew that once they saw it, they could use the card to create an awful lot of stir. So let me get this straight. FLIR didn't put the expletive on it, but when they saw it, they saw potential, and they let it not only slide through, but they enhanced it. Uh... No. I think, if anything, it could hurt the company, because one of the major purchasers of baseball cards would be kids. And maybe some, you know, kids would run out and buy this thing, but more likely parents wouldn't want to buy them for their children. And I think that's probably where a lot of that money was going towards it. Having something like this on your card is not a thing that would be good for business if you are marketing something to children, right? I mean, I know I would want to buy it, but yeah, maybe, I don't know. But for card collectors, this four letter word error is a financial home run. Well, the first day I became aware of it, they were selling it for $10. The next day it was 15, the next day it was 25. And then uh, two days later, I saw people selling it for $75. I called FLIR and they said that if you had a Billy Ripken air card and you wanted to turn that air card in, they would replace it with a card that was not an air card. How many people do you think are doing that? Uh, only people who don't like money. So you might be wondering how much does one of these cards cost? Well, I got this one along with the censored version with the black box on it for, I think it was like 10 bucks or something, 20 bucks, somewhere around there. I got it years ago, but it wasn't a lot of money. It's possible that these are not authentic. Um, they were sold as authentic, though. <laughs> so I don't think these are actually that expensive. However, there are several other variants of this when they were rushing to censor it. So if you get one that has the Sharpie, on it or the whiteout on it those are worth a bit more and there are further variants than that i think there's like a dozen or something different variants the website billripkin.com is kind of amazing because it's not owned by bill ripkin it's owned by a fan and he dedicated the whole site just to these cards check out billripkin.com if you want to learn more about this card because that has everything including photos of all the different variants of this card and there's a bunch some of the rare variants of this card can actually go for hundreds of dollars. So although these aren't worth that much, if you get one of the rare variations, can actually be worth quite a lot. As it turns out, this is not the only baseball card that has an expletive on it. There's also another card that came out a year later featuring the player Jim Nettles. And that card has something else to say. So how did that one happen? Well, Jim Nettles said in an interview with The Examiner that it was a teammate playing a prank on him. I'm not going to say whose it was, but that word describes his personality. 
Unlike Billy Ripken, who seems to have accepted that this card is out there, Jim Nettles is not so happy about it. He doesn't talk about it all that much. And if you go up to Jim Nettles and ask him to autograph one of those cards, he will purposely sign over the end of the bat to obscure the obscenity. I don't think it's funny, but I don't let it bother me. I just hope some kid doesn't pick up the card and think I wrote it on there. So, is Billy Ripken telling the truth when he says that he wrote that on the end of his bat to distinguish it? I don't really know. I mean, you can take his word for it. I, I see this as like a kind of a weird thing to do, but also it would be weird to change the story. The first story he had was actually a little bit more believable, that teammates were messing with him. I could buy that. BillRipken.com has done some research by comparing the handwriting that's on the bat with some of Bill Ripken's autographs. They came to the conclusion that the writing on the bat is indeed Bill Ripken's. He did apparently write F face on the bottom of his bat. I wasn't doing it to put it on a card. I did it for locker room humor. I wrote it on there just so I would know it was my BP bat. And then soon enough you get caught. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching everybody. Uh, this is my one piece of sporting memorabilia that I have in my apartment. And uh, I think that's a good one to have. Until next time, guys. Take care. I know what it looks like to me, but I wouldn't say it on television. <laughs>